Hi everyone. Hey, it's Monday morning. Welcome to my channel. Uh, we're back in the cool air and the rain, but not as much. So hopefully there won't be any flooding this time. And I hope where you're at that uh, you're safe, you're warm, that you have what you need and that uh, you feel loved. I just thank you for coming on my channel today and being a part of this today. Today I'm just going to show you a few things I finished this weekend and one that I'm working on. And then we're just going to have a, a discussion about, uh, I'm going to let you know a little bit more about myself. I know I did in the first one, but I think I need to tell you a little bit more. First of all, this is a, a beanie that I made or a hat that I made for my granddaughter to wear uh, while she's practicing uh, t-ball this, this month because it's cold. And I found this online on YouTube and you... Uh, do a single crochet around a one of the um, stretchy uh, ponytail holders, and that leaves you the hole for your uh, ponytail to go through. And she's got long hair, and hopefully this will work really great for her because she's going to need it today if they practice today at all. And then Creative Grandma, I think I mentioned this last week, had a a try me pack of yarn from Premier Yarns. I don't uh, get any money when I talk about Hirschner's Willow, Premier Red Heart, any of this. Uh, I'm talking to you straight as a person who's had to purchase it, who wants to share with you what it's like uh, for a not an advanced crocheter, but someone that's crocheted for a while and uh, what, what it worked, how it works for me. And then you can try it if you choose and see how it works for you. Now this pillow, she had done one, a pillow in these same colors and it's called Sunshine and Rainbows. And I did my, each of my sides differently. I had these pillows on my couch for years and I just got so tired of them looking the way they did. And so I decided this would be the one I would cover with this granny square. And it worked up well. The yarn is great. Um, I had just enough in the rainbow to do the rainbow color, multicolored, uh, to do the, both sides. I had enough of the blue to have a little bit left over. And I had a little bit of the yellow left over. But it was fun to work up. It was interesting uh, going in the squares and changing your yarn and that kind of stuff. And I like it. I think it's bright and it's beautiful. It'll go well. Instead of on the couch, this will go on our bed. Our room is a dark, dark blue. And this will add some color on our bed in, in our room. And I, so I'm looking forward to uh, putting it in there tonight and just leaving it on the bed or around the bed. And I was told you last week that I was working on, um, uh, crocheting another afghan and this is the pattern that creative grandma did it's her one of the easiest patterns she says for anybody to do um, you can fill in the uh, openings here with uh, yarn or even with ribbon I would imagine and finish them when you do the edging and the, the finished stitches around um, I have done a couple of them like that, and it's very quick to work up. I love it. It just is just something so much fun to do. So I've had a weekend of grandkids and uh, crocheting, and it's been been okay. I, uh, <laughs> as you know, if you have RA or fibro, there are days when if you change your attitude towards something, you can go do something that's kind of dumb and. Yesterday, our grandson went out the front door before his father, and I followed his father out the door, and unfortunately, I went off my porch on the side where uh, we have stones on the other side that we had put up there for my steps to go down on that one side. Well, I hurried too much, and I got my big dog to uh, show me, is the word we use for her, and she will go and find what you're looking for. Well, she went running and I hurried too fast to the end of the house and she was down there herding him back this way. And he just cracked up because here she comes down there not to touch him, but she turned him around. 
and he came running back to the house. And it's just, you know, one of those things. By the time I got back to the porch, my right knee had popped out of place a little and it hurt and it's still sore, but I'm okay. It's I'm walking today better than I did yesterday. And for those of you that have fibro, mine is still very active, unfortunately. Um, my rheumatoid arthritis is still very active. I, I'm so sorry for all of you that have these illnesses that hurt, that are frustrating, that make you so tired, you could sleep all day. I, I could have slept all day yesterday. Um, then I didn't want to sleep last night and I could go right back to sleep right now. But that's part of this. And I'm not going to tell you any different. I don't believe that we have the right to lie about what it does to us. I don't want to, like I told you before, I don't want to talk to you about medications because some medications work, some don't. I've had so many different biologics that don't work. Uh, and then I've had, you know, simple things that help some. And I'm just like the rest of you. I'm hoping and praying that somewhere someone will find a way to stop these things, uh, to stop the pain with, that goes with what we have. And if they can't, I'm just going to keep praying for all of us because it's hard. It's a, it's a rough time, especially in the winter and then when it gets really, really hot in the summer. But right now... I'm here to say hi. <laughs> I'll let you know a little bit about myself. I was raised in Oregon, and I think I told you this, in a town called Newburgh. Uh, my brother and I, that's where we live with our parents after my dad got out of the Air Force. My parents worked in Portland. My mother worked for the IRS, and my dad worked for the Forest Service. And it was a great town to live in, very small at the time, very safe at the time. You could walk across town without having to be afraid or anything else. And I did walk from one school on one side of the town back to my grandmother's house after school every day. And uh, it was like, you know, all the way across town, a different end of the world. And that was different, but you got used to it. You knew that you had a raincoat that had a, you know, was a warm coat for the winter and fall and you walked in the rain. <laughs> it's no big deal. Just part of what you did. It's how you how you grew up. Uh, I was a tomboy and a half. I loved to climb trees in my grandmother's yard. I loved to uh, play tag. I don't think kids play tag the same way. They try to hurt one another now. We played tag. We played mother may I. And I, that game was a blast in the front yard of my grandmother's house. And I remember this yard being huge. Well, we went back two years ago uh, and showed my kids, the, one of my sons anyway, and his family, where her house was and the yard. And I looked at the yard and I thought, oh, my goodness, this is a tiny, tiny place. But it felt great big to us back then. But we were tiny. Maybe that's why. Uh, and in there we would play, you know, like I said, Mother May I. Uh, we played tag, freeze tag. I know in the summertime when um, uh, the gentleman that owned a, a lot across the road from my grandmother's across the street uh, would come and bush hog the grass down. That's mowing it down. They would be um, red racers and black garden snakes over there, and they would have been killed by the uh, tractor and the mowing of the property. And we would go over and pick these things up by the tail, knowing they're dead. And we come screaming back in front of my grandmother's house and running around everywhere, chasing the other kids with our snakes and everybody screaming, but everybody knew they were dead, but it was so much fun. And then we just throw the snake out in the, out in the street and just leave it because it was already dead, but it was fun. We go crawdad hunting at the park. You go to a creek and you would go down there and you would uh, put a take a piece of string and put a great big safety pin on it. Put something on the safety pin that these crawdads would grab with their hooks. And you go in there and you catch them and you put them in a bag or in a box and take them home. You didn't want them to pitch your fingers, but they were so much fun to show that you could catch those things down there in the, in the creek. We also made a um, floating, kind of like a just a floating type of um, dock 
with a friend down there one time, my brother and I did, and we all got on this thing and we're, and we're riding it down and pushing it down the, the creek. And I think it got stuck somewhere and then we had to turn around and try to get it to go back. But it was fun. We had things to do. We didn't sit inside and uh, look at a video recorder or my computer or my no, uh, you know, tablets or phones or any of this. And I think we stayed active and enjoyed life. It was fun. It was a beautiful thing to do. I know the town has changed now, big time. Uh, a lot of the people have left the town that I used to know. Uh, some are still there, but I don't know where because the town has totally changed. But it was fun to go back and have the good memories of the schools and the, the teachers and um, the friends that I had. And one friend, her dad still lives there. And I was so thrilled to get to see him because I didn't know uh, if he was still alive and his wife had only passed away a year before. And I wish I had known and been able to go see them uh, before she passed away. They were very sweet. Uh, Monica was my best friend for a long time. And uh, I miss her. I miss the times we had and I'm sorry about her mom. But it was fun to go back and just see, even though I was in a automatic wheelchair, it was fun. I could travel and still go and meet people again and see places and that was great. So the Pacific Northwest for me has always been a, a beautiful place. I know most people have problems with it because it rains a lot. Well, yeah, it does, but that's why it stays so green and so beautiful. Uh, when we were kids, my brother and I used to go with my Aunt Catherine, my mother's sister, and she and her husband liked to rock hound. They would go and they wanted to find rocks. They had a way to um, make them shiny and to cut them and put them into, he put them in jewelry. He did all sorts of beautiful things with them. And so we'd go help and we would, you know, go to the gravel pit there. And we'd all pick up, you know, anything that looked like it would work. And then we went to the beach one time, and this was the blast. Anna Catherine Oka High took us to the beach with them. And we were going to Rock Hill, because you used to be able to find agates and different things on the beach. Now, after some damage from high waves and, and things that overtook even the town and the sides of the mountains there, uh, you didn't. I didn't see any. I think it's now illegal, they say, to take it out of there. But... We went in then, and this was umpteen hundred years ago, you know. So we went in and uh, were picking up all sorts of rocks, all sorts. And they were round or long or, you know, but they were all smooth. And we picked up several, and Uncle High looked at him and said, I don't think there's anything to those. No, no, no. I and Catherine said, well, let's just try. Let's try. Well, we picked up so many rocks that we had buckets full. She had the bottom of her shirt full for you ladies who know you turn your shirt tail up and put things in there. Her pockets were full. On the way up the hill to their car, <laughs> her, her pants unsnapped because, because we put so many rocks in her pants and she had to stop <laughs> and give us a bunch of the rocks so she could get the rest of the way up the hill without losing her pants. And that was just, Jody and I just thought that was so hilarious back then. Uh, but we didn't say too much because we didn't want to embarrass her any more than she already was embarrassed. But it was so much fun to do that with them. And we square danced from the time we were 10 and 11 years old. Um, we had friends that were a lot older than us and some that were the same age and some that were younger who danced with us. Um, like I said, we traveled doing that. It was amazing. But a lot of those people are, are gone now and several passed away earlier than they should have. But we, uh, we had fun. We lived in that small town and it was okay to be in a small town then. You didn't have to have the top of the top and the best of the best. You just enjoyed what you did have and what you could do with friends and family. And we just went on and had a great time. It was amazing. Um, the junior high I went to is no longer even in existence. They tore it down. Um, 
the high school is used to be open and you go from building to building, uh, walking, you know, under these catwalks and going to eat the next class. Well, now it's enclosed because of the situation of nowadays. They have it closed in so people can't get to the buildings and the rooms. And I understand that, but it's sad because it was fun to have that. And we could go out, we had 10 minutes for clubs to meet and things like that uh, once a day or once a week, I can't remember which, and we stand outside. We weren't getting wet, it was cool, but we weren't wet, we talked, those of us that weren't involved in the club. And it was, it was a good thing, it was an amazing time. But we're older, much older now, and a lot of us look back and go, oh, and I hope you're not one of those. I know several were treated very poorly. And bullying was then too, and it was bad. But I'm very thankful that I had a lot of friends that didn't bully. And if you had people that bullied you, or if you thought I bullied you, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I would never have done that if I had known that it was hurting you. I thank you all for being out here on my channel. I hope that your RA that I've had for so long now and is at least under control for the moment. Mine, as you can see, the color of my knuckles, they're swollen and when they turn red like that, they're inflamed and they don't move right now. The other hand has gotten worse in the last two weeks. It doesn't open all the way anymore, but that's to be expected. And um, I'm still working with it. I can't work through it. I can work through the pain, but I have to work with it. I have to learn how to do the things I love, even if I can't do it without some discomfort. I thank you for watching. I hope you're not in discomfort today. I hope you have a, a great day. I keep saying this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful that I have that knowledge, but I'm more thankful that there's somebody greater than me, greater than my positions, greater than the president of the United States, believe it or not. And he is watching over me, walking with me and holding me through this, just like he is for you, whether you know it or not. And like I said, it, you don't have to believe that's your choice. But I hope that talking about what it, the piece that it gives me maybe will help you to have a better day. Uh, enjoy what you're crocheting. Try something fun. Go on YouTube today. Creative Grandma has um, a way that you can get 10% off of um, a yarn kit to make a the, um, exploring the center of the earth. And it's a uh, hexagon and it moves on out. And it's beautiful, and she you order the kit from, I think she said it was Hershner's, and uh, you can get ten percent off today if you if you go on her website and put in the code that she has just for this, uh, and if you have that time and if you have that money, and I know it's expensive, but if you can get ten percent off of your whole order, that's a great thing. Trust me. So hang in there, find some yarns that you like subscribe to my channel down below the picture hit the bell so you'll know when it comes on and then also leave me a comment go down below there and there's a comment section and all you have to do is hit that on your tablet your phone uh, and your you know it will open up a call you can talk to me you, it'll leave a name or a picture whatever you have and we can correspond that way and you can tell me how your day is I'll listen you can tell me about crochet. I've noticed someone on my Facebook page has been entering things about crochet now, and I just love it because that's something we have in common, even though we live miles and miles and miles and miles apart. It's amazing to have that connection to someone, not only because we are ill, but because we love to do things that are creative and fun and frustrating. I've taken a lot of works out because they're hard to do sometimes. And I just finally tell myself, just forget this one. You can try it later. But I've tried. 
And when I redo, I redo. And when I don't, that's okay too. Right now, I'm just taking a breath and hoping and praying for everyone out there today. I hope in the next few days I'll have a tutorial. If not, I will have some other projects that I've done and worked with to show you. Be blessed. Have a good day. Be safe. Don't give up hope. Don't give a hope. Today is a good day. Bye.